Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been quite a while since I've done any updates on this channel and so I did want to finish off this VFX workflow tutorial that I started quite some time ago. If you watch uh, video number two, you'll see that I said that my next video I was going to talk about managing VFX status in editorial. I'm not going to do that because we're too far gone at this point. What I do want to do is I actually just want to show you what I do after I lock a sequence and how I prepare VFX for the VFX departments. So this includes uh, prepping my locked sequence, exporting VFX references for the VFX artists, and also exporting the actual full-size, full-frame footage as VFX pulls for the artists, and I do that in Resolve. So what you can see here in my sequence, this is my locked cut. Everything is set up as it was when I locked it. So we have um, a really organized set of video tracks and a really organized set of, or sort of organized set of audio tracks down below. So for the purposes of our VFX pulls, we do wanna have some sound reference on the VFX so that the VFX artists can understand the context of the shots that they're making. Um, but we don't actually need to keep every track individual. So the first thing that I usually do when I'm prepping for VFX is I make a version of the sequence that has an audio mix down. That just keeps everything clean and tidy and makes sure that we don't accidentally start messing around with audio tracks when we don't want to. So I'm gonna do that first. I'm just gonna start at the beginning of the sequence. I'm gonna to go to the end of the sequence. I'm gonna select everything. And then I'm gonna go up to timeline, mix down, audio, to sequence. Um, I'm gonna choose, just so that it can be interesting, I'm gonna choose a stereo mix down, cause why not? Um, and I'm just gonna put it in the same bin and I'm gonna put it on the drive where I'm storing all of my media for this project. Audio mix downs really don't take very long. It's just basically taking all the audio and making new MXF files um, for that audio. So they'll all just kind of be mixed together. So if you have an episode of television that's like 45 minutes or a feature film that's 90 minutes, it should still only take two or three or four minutes to get the mix down done. Okay, so here's my audio mix down, um, which we can just view here. It's just uh, a single track, single stereo track mix down of the whole thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually duplicate my sequence and I'm gonna call it lock cut mix down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scroll down and it actually, Avid actually puts the mix down on your very bottom track. You can see it here. So it's already automatically lined up. I don't have to worry about it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all the other audio tracks. So now I have just a really nice clean sequence that just has my various video tracks and my audio mix down track. So the next thing I just want to point out is I want to point out all of the various burn-ins and data that I have here on the sequence because this is really important. So as you can see, I have a VFX notes track, I actually have two of them, um, and those are these blue text here. Um, Oh, I also put some ADR on there, which I probably shouldn't have. But anyways, um, there's some VFX tracks here. And uh, then there's also um, time code, right? This is my time code up here at the top. This is my time code track. Um, I also have a, a frame count track. So as you can see down in the bottom here, this frame count restarts with every VFX shot. So every VFX shot starts with frame one, counts all the way up, and then... Uh, so this one's 183 frames long. The next shot starts at frame one again. And that's really, really handy for VFX artists when they're looking at a reference uh, for a film to see that there's a frame count. You don't have to do it, but I like to do it because it's really helpful, I think, for them. Or hopefully it's helpful for them. Um, and then the last thing I have, this track here, is a VFX ID track. Um, and every VFX shot has a different VFX ID. And I talked in a previous video about how to come up with VFX numbers and how to properly create like a series of numbers for your show. Um, so these are all the VFX IDs for each shot. Okay, so now that I've pointed that out, the actual, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna export the entire film as a reference um, because any VFX artist or VFX house that is gonna be working on this is gonna wanna basically probably watch the whole film at least once so they have a sense of what it's all about and how it's supposed to feel, where certain things, certain assets repeat and all of that. If you have a smaller project where you really only have one or two VFX shots, you may not wanna do a whole export of your show. But um, 
I find just as a courtesy, it's just a nice way to be able to get the artists involved with the show and be able to talk to them about it uh, in various ways. If they've just at least seen it once, it's really helpful. So I'm actually just going to do an export and I am going to choose um, MXF export, MXF OP1A. It's kind of the best way to just get an export out of Avid really quickly, um, maintaining the quality of the codecs that you currently are using in your project. Um, I'm going to use marks and select tracks and I'm going to make sure that it's stereo and I'm going to send it out. Okay, so now that that export is done, I'm actually going to go in. I realized I probably should have named it differently. So I'm going to just pop in and rename it um, instead of, because it's still called Mixdown. I'm just going to call it Ref because um, I think that's a better name for it. And I'm also going to change the name of the sequence here to Ref as well. If you have any group clips in your sequence, this is probably a good opportunity to remove the group clips. You can do that by right clicking and saying collapse multicam edits, and it will make you a new sequence that says no groups. Um, because as you go through this process, obviously you don't really want to be dealing with multiple clips in a group. You've already decided which ones you're using and your cut is locked. So in the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create individual VFX references for every single VFX shot in this show. That may seem like overkill, but I found that it's really, really handy to be able to have a short clip for every shot that just shows exactly what takes place in that shot. And that short clip is going to include all of the temp VFX that we have done. So it's basically just going to be an extract of like this little section uh, for each shot and we're going to make one export for each different VFX shot in the film. This film has a lot of VFX shots so it's going to take us a while but it's worth it and so I'm going to go through that process now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new bin for this. I'm going to call it HMS VFX refs um, because I'm going to create all of the VFX references as little mini sequences. So the way that I do that is I'm just going to start with my first VFX shot here. I'm going to set the in point at the start of the VFX shot. I'm going to set the out point at the end of the VFX shot. And then I'm going to use the make subclip command, which I have hotkeyed to my keyboard. But if you do not have it, you can uh, find it. Um, it looks like this make subclip. So right now I have a hotkey to my R key. You can set it up either as a hotkey in your shortcuts or you can set it up as a button. If you want to set it up as a button, um, you can just go to command palette. I think I've probably gone through this process before, but um, button to button reassignment and then you can find it under the edit section in command palette. Again, this is an older version of Avid, so you may find it somewhere else. Um, make subclip, you can drag it and have it be a button or you can drag it to your keyboard. So this is just really helps everything move along really quickly. And the thing about make subclip is if you have a sequence selected, it will make a sub sequence. And the advantage to making a sub sequence is that it will maintain the time code that is actually native to the source sequence. So in this case, the time code at the start of my clip is one hour because it's the first shot of the show. Um, when I make a sub clip, um, it's going to also start at one hour. Um, when I go to my next one, my next VFX shot starts at 1000715. And when I make a sub sequence of that, it's also going to start at 1000715. So it maintains the integrity of my time code at all times. So as I go through and make these VFX references, I'm also going to rename the sequence itself based on the VFX ID. So that's this VFX number that's in the bottom right. So in, by the end of this, I'm going to have a different subsequence for each VFX ID and they are going to be labeled as such. I have not figured out a way to do this autom automatically. If anyone has an idea of how to automate this, that would be great. But as it stands now, I basically have to go through the entire sequence and do it manually. So now I'm on shot three, in, out, select all tracks, sub clip and then name it. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to do all of the shots in the film. Don't forget to save periodically. I'm hitting Apple S after each one of these. It's just a reflex for me at this point. But the last thing you want to do is do all this work and then have your system crash on you. 
Since you're doing this manually, it is really important to be really diligent. Make sure that you're naming everything correctly. Don't rush. Take your time. And as you can see, some of these have quite a lot of temp tracks on them. This one, for example, I've done a whole bunch of temporary VFX here. The temp is for the references only. So I've gone through the whole show and I've subclipped all of the shots. So as you can see, I have a whole bin here full so that what I'm going to be able to do is I can export a little quick time of each single one of these sequences. It's going to include all of the overlays, the text, it's going to include the number, the frame count, and it's going to include the sound so they can hear uh, the temp sound that is underneath or the dialogue or whatever it is that they need. So my next step is I'm just literally going to select everything in this bin except for the main uh, show and I am going to output export to file and I'm going to do a whole bunch of little MXF OP1A reference files. Um, I'm going to convert these shortly to MP4s but I'm going to export them this way first because it's much faster. So I'm going to uncheck use marks and use selected tracks because for each one of these sequences I didn't necessarily put marks in and the, I don't know what tracks are selected so it'll just do the whole sequence for each of these little clips. Um, and you, as you can see a lot of them are like three seconds, two seconds, eight seconds. So it should move through these pretty quickly. Um, and I'm going to make a subfolder here called VFX refs. And off they go. Okay, and so all of those have now been exported to this VFX ref folder and they all appear here in order. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to convert all of these to MP4s because I think that that's a more common format that a lot of people would be able to read and I just do that with media encoder. So um, yeah I'm just going to open that up now and I'm going to get that running in the background while I take on the next step of this process. I'm just going to make sure that all of them are set to H.264 and match source high bit rate. And that's just a really easy way to create like a really nice compact file. So I'm gonna run that queue now um, in the background while I do the next step. So the next step after exporting all the references is actually getting these sequences ready to be VFX pulls. And the pull is just going to be the actual source media that the VFX artist needs in order to do the VFX shot. So the pull is not going to include any of the extraneous stuff that's on these sequences. It's not going to include the text. It's not going to include any of the temp VFX things that we have. It's not going to include the audio. So in order to do that, I make, I do this in a separate bin so that I have copies of everything. So I'm going to call it VFX pulls. And once again, I'm going to copy all of these sequences except the full show. I'm going to Apple D to make a duplicate of them and then I grab them and pull them into the VFX pulls. They all come with the uh, copy suffix, but that's okay because it's a really good way to keep track of which clips we've uh, worked on and which clips we haven't. So I'm going to start right at the top. I'm going to open up uh, this sequence. So this is again, this was what we had subclipped with all of the elements. And I'm just going to take away everything that we don't need. Um, it's actually really confusing because in this case, the very first shot of the film is an entirely VFX build. So they don't need anything. They don't need any plates from me. They don't need any backgrounds. Um, they're building everything from scratch. So I'm just actually going to delete this because we're not going to be doing any pulls for this shot. For the next shot, however, we do have one video track on V1 that's going to be a pull. Everything else is going to get deleted. So now we have just the shot itself and only that shot that will be used for VFX. And once I've done that, I'm going to take off this copy. So now I know that I've done that shot and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to do each shot. And because of the nature of the shots in this film, most VFX shots only have one video track attached to them. But depending on what types of shots you're doing, if you have a lot of comps, for example, where you have like, you know, a picture inside of a television or something like that, then you're often, you're probably going to have several pieces of footage per VFX shot. In this case, as you can see, I have like one part of the shot is longer than the other part of the shot. That's just how the shot was designed. One of the elements appears and then disappears. Um, so I'm just leaving them the length that uh, they are, that they need to be. 
Once we get into doing these pulls in Resolve, we can add handles, so we do not need to add handles now. I'm also taking off all the resizes on these shots, and I'm going to let the VFX artists uh, do their own resizes as needed uh, inside the shots based on the reference that they see. Um, and if it's a resize of the whole shot on its own, then the online editor is going to do that, not the VFX team. Okay, so now that I've done all of that, Okay, so at some point in the middle of recording that, I somehow lost the section where I exported all the AAFs. So I'm going to have to redo that really quick. As you can see, I've since upgraded my Avid to a different version number. So it might actually look more like your Avid now than uh, my old one. But anyway, here we have all of the uh, sequences that I made with the VFX polls, um, which I've just demonstrated. I'm going to select them all, and then I'm going to right click Output, Export to File. I'm going to navigate to the location where I want to export them. Um, see, I had done them all already, but I missed the, somehow I lost the footage where I showed you. So I'm going to do them again. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, I'm going to start with an untitled export setting, and I'm going to make sure that I've selected AAF here at the top. I am going to unselect all the boxes because we're just going to export every sequence, no matter what's selected or what's marked. Um, we're not including any audio tracks, so I'm just going to uncheck that. We're going to make sure that AAF edit protocol is checked off. We are going to include all the video data tracks in sequence, but we're not including any audio tracks. These are going to be video AAFs only. Under export method, um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to link to don't export the media. So basically this is going to be an empty AAF that um, is going to be relinked in Resolve to the master footage from the camera. So link to don't export media. We're not rendering or mixing down everything. And then the media destination section is grayed out because we're not exporting any media. We're just exporting metadata. And I'm going to click Save, and it's going to export all of the AAFs. And that's it. And now that's done. And so here are all of my VFX pulls. They're all AAFs. And in my next video, I'm going to go through the process of importing these AAFs into Resolve, relinking them to the master footage, and doing the final polls for the VFX artists. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you thought.